Hello friends, welcome to another episode of the Urban Homestead in China with Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and her Peter. If this is the first time you're visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very, very warm welcome. If you're a subscriber or you have been here before, welcome back, we appreciate your visiting. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Today we have a fun and useful project for you guys. We're going to build a charcuterie board which is a, a board that allows you to present food or even uh, prepare food on, right? Mm -hmm. But I think mostly it's for presentation. You, right. you take it. The artful presentation. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, sagutary boards are very popular and can be very expensive. Three, four hundred dollars is not uncommon for a sagutary board. In our case, we did buy more expensive wood, as you can see here. And you can buy any wood you want. You can buy really expensive wood, like you can be, buy a mahogany, you can buy purple heart any kind of wood and, walnut, and combine whatever. it, walnut, mm -hmm. etc. In our case, we chose this wood primarily because it has this beautiful grain, right? Mm -hmm. And we chose the same species, but a different width board, and we are going to combine the two and make it, actually, we're going to cut everything in half, right? And we're going to make it a longer, okay. a longer board. So today we're going to show you everything you have to do to make it a charcuterie board. And if you follow everything, all our steps, we're going to show you everything we do. And also we're going to share tips and tricks along the way. So you can have an easy time making one for yourself. So starting with these two boards, to this beautiful personalized charcuterie board. So we're going to turn, to turn those two boards of wood we just purchased to this beautiful charcuterie board. And what was our cost? the two boards it was about $27 All right, and that might seem like a lot but these things sell for a lot of money right mm -hmm. especially personalized and again you, you might not be able to personalize it but even non personalized it, it costs quite a lot of money right and we did cho choose a higher grade of wood we went with a poplar that was a very nice um, hardwood and we did not use all the wood we bought by any chance so really we didn't spend 27 we spent $27 for the wood, but probably we could have made two charcuterie boards out of it, yeah. right? So, doing about 15 bucks, I think, per board, if mm -hmm. you make more than one. So, stick around, we're going to show you, as always, every step of the way, and we're going to talk about tips and tricks. Here's a trip and tip. A trip and tick. Uh, because this is going to be a finished product all around, front and back, we want our cuts to be very clean, right? With mm -hmm. as little damage to the edge as possible. Mm -hmm. Using painter's tape, and let me show that we have it all around, right? Mm -hmm. Will allow us to make nice clean cuts. Okay, and why is that? Because without the tape, as the um, blade moves in, as you have seen in the past, makes a little splintering and- mm -hmm. So tear out. Fuzzy tear mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. This prevents, I wouldn't say prevents, uh, reduces it minimizes by 90%. It. You know? Minimizes yeah, the amount it, it of tear out a, we get. It is a really good process. So, so okay. it kind of stabilizes the wood fibers so that they stay right. in place. Okay. All right. So let's go and cut this. Let's make our first cut. See the difference? Mm -hmm. So if we take the tape out, keep the shot so people don't think we do any trickery, it's a much, much cleaner cut. You see it? Yeah. And you can see it did a little bit on the back, but it's still but much But comparatively, nicer. it is. Yeah. Again, we say and we again, didn't eliminate it, we just improve it, right? Right, and we were cutting off this edge just to make sure we have a clean edge right. for our project. Excellent. This would have become a splinter in the wood. You see that? Mm -hmm. Is it visible in the camera? And look at this. Right? Mm -hmm. See the difference? It's a good, it's a good practice. It's a good tips and tricks. A tips and tricks, you mean? Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. And when you use the tape trick, put your marks for what you cut on the tape, right? So mm -hmm. not, not on the wood anymore because you won't see it after you tape it. So put your mark on the tape. In our case, it's 16 and a half if you want to follow our dimensions, right? Sixteen and a half. Sixteen, six and a half, I said, right? Uh -oh. Yeah. Good Sixteen and a half for the main body. Right. So using our uh, center finder, we're going to find the center on both edges of this edge end of this uh, piece of wood. 
And we are going to do the same on both ends of the wood. Okay, excellent. All right. So we can extend this line, the X line, and that gets to be in the middle of our uh, blade, right? The other, this way. I know, okay. I was just checking. It looks, it's, it looks a little off, but it's not. Okay, so after we did the center finder on this end, we then drew a line here. And because we're trying to do it exactly in the middle, we have lined this line up with the middle of the saw blade. And that's where it's now set. Okay. wider piece. We're going to do a middle finder uh, on one end and we're going to draw that line, line that up with our saw and cut down the middle. And then we're going to have another wider piece that's going to stay this width in the middle. And then all the other pieces are going to be lined up just to give some visual. Here's our first uh, dry feet. And as you can see, we here is where you play with the orientation and the grain and see how you want it. Not as critical in this piece because in essence, both sides have to be finished both sides have to look good, right? So after we decide what we want, we are going to make a handle on this, that extra piece here, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to make a handle and then we're going to start the gluing process. So we're using one of our pizza peels that we like the, sem uh, the shape of the handle to give us some general direction because none of us is very comfortable in our ability to do this freehand, right? So you can use something you have, or conversely, you can print something from the internet, right? A, a sketch or something and, and apply it. So this is our approach and we're going to um, manufacture a shape we like and we'll go from there. While having a bandsaw is a nice tool to have right now, it is absolutely not necessary. A jigsaw can achieve the same work. This is a fairly straightforward curve that we're cutting. So do not be discouraged that we're using a bandsaw. We simply have it and therefore we use it. But the jigsaw, even a hand copying saw, can achieve the same result with very little effort. Or even a straight cut and then eating a straight cut between the two points and then using a lot of sanding and make a nice curve. There are many different ways to make a project and it does not mean that you should not do a project because you don't have a, every tool we demonstrate here or you should not have to go and buy out a tool. Again, we are using the tools we have but they are by no means required to achieve the same result as we demonstrate here. One of the neat things in the way we're uh, showing you how to do that, if you make the one side, as we saw you, you can use the off-cut piece, and we're going to demonstrate in a moment how to do that, but you can use that off-cut piece to mark the other side, so you can have a nice mirror image of your pieces without having to have a perfect drawing. This is a nice little tip for, for you guys like us that we do not have the very expensive CAD software or the ability to make uh, perfect planning as far as it, uh, reproducing this, the same or the perfect mirror image. Again, do not be discouraged if you don't have every tool that you see in every woodmaker's uh, channel. We always try to find ways to do things with the tools that we have and we do realize we have m more tools than a lot of you guys might have, but still Everything is doable, everything is possible. Just be a little bit innovative, try your best, and find ways to get around the tools that you do not have. And as we go on, you can even glue this piece here, so it will be a perfect copy. You can use a little uh, uh, hot glue and glue it there. And that's a tip. If you want to do that, we can. Yeah. Or you can just put it there and line it up and trace it depending right. on what your comfort Whatever level you prefer, is. What you prefer. Yep. And just line it. Here's the first piece that was cut out. We flipped it over. 
used it as the template. So then we have a mirror image, did a trace around, and now we will cut that out using the bandsaw. We won't make you sit through that again, but it's the same process. What the heck is that? It's a flying creature. Yeah, look at that. It's on the floor. So, that's huge. Mm -hmm. And where is our kidney thingy? So what we've done is line up all the pieces in the orientation we want. We're going to use the biscuit joiner to join these pieces using biscuits. And we've got the marks on each piece. And so now we have started. Mm -hmm. So now we have started with that first biscuit cut. You can see it's nice and clean. Now we're going to do the second one. And if you do not have a biscuit joiner, you can use dowels mm -hmm. or just glue. You know, you just need right. to make sure you let it dry very well. Right, and clamp it to make right. sure it's held together And correctly. you need to leave it, uh, what do you call it? You need to leave it for 24 hours. To feel fully cured. Right. Fully yeah. cured, right. Okay. And so we have this set up here so that the board can have support against these uh, clamps so they don't move. We've got the line lined up. Now we'll go to the next boards in line. Repeat that a million times. So, right, we are doing a test on the off cut of how this is going to look on this wood. And not sponsored, we purchased this with our own monies. Actually, I think we haven't bought this brand before. We have not. We have not. I mean, it is Rust Oleum. We bought some of their products before, but not this type of uh, stain product. Are you sure this is, is this by Rust-Oleum? It says Rust-Oleum on the back. Oh, okay. It just says something else on the front. Okay. Um, and this is supposed to be food safe and it it's a stain safe, yeah. and uh, oil made for butcher blocks. Um, looking to see how the darkness goes on the darker grain of the wood as well as on the light, lighter grain. And we should mention that if you make something like that for the kitchen, you need to make sure that what finish you use is food safe. Right. And you don't have to use that food, that chain, that chain, that uh, finish that allows for a change in the look of the wood. You can use, for example, an oil like the beeswax we use. Right. That's food safe too, you know? It's not? Okay, then don't use that. It's not food right. safe. But this, this product does come in something that is just a clear stain, so you don't actually have, or just a clear finish, so you don't have a stain color. Um, I think what we're potentially looking for is just some visual interest between a darker and a lighter. Maybe we need to do both this, because we have another piece exactly like this. Too, right? So we want to see what it's going to turn out like. Want to do the other thing? Yeah. So far, I like the look of this. It's it's called hazelnut, which you know is not my favorite nut, but mm -hmm. the color, but the color is, is pretty nice. nice. Yeah, it's a very and this nice is the darkest one we could find. Other am I than your the favorite black. nut? Hazelnut. Mm -hmm. I say, am I your favorite nut? You are my favorite nut of all. Excellent. But you can see that's coming out very nicely. Do you like that piece? What is this? So as part of our test, we're just doing the clear. Um, this is just a clear butcher block finish. With the other piece, we have two mm -hmm. pieces like this, right? Right, and we're going to make a comparison between the two just to see what we like. And again, you want to make sure that things are stirred up very well before you get started. Um, particularly when you're, you're working with the types that have the pigments in it because they do tend to settle down at the bottom. And we have no idea how long this has stayed in. Right, how long did it sit in the big box store? Yeah. And because we've never used this product, we don't really know what to expect from both of them. So. Right. So that accentuates the grain but without changing the color, really, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Can we do the other side too or not? Mm -hmm. 
And so this side has some of that darker grain in it. Mm -hmm. the two up together mm -hmm. just so that we can and these remember are from the same piece the same bowl mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. Right. I, I think I like this okay. better okay. than the stain and so one. from this point it's just a personal preference and uh, as mrs. DIY said she likes the plain that's just gonna accentuate the grain but without changing the color mm -hmm. okay. so here is a tip and trick for you when you are closing your containers of stain or poly, put a cloth over it before you use the hammer to tap it back in. That will prevent the splatter from happening. And splatter does happen. It does. Splatter indeed happens. As you can see by the marks on the cloth, we already did that with the stained one, and so that actually just soaked it all up without it splattering on all, all over you. Okay, so we are setting up to get ready for the gluing and biscuiting process. One of the things we did was to line up this board here so that it is completely perpendicular at the 90 degree angle, and you can see we used that to make sure we were there. We've got it clamped into place. Our boards we're going to use to line up there to make sure they are straight. And we're also putting down uh, the wax paper to make sure that it doesn't stick to our subboard here. Okay, and remember when you are using biscuits, mm -hmm. you need to put glue in all the biscuit openings, right. but only on one side of what you're connected. Do not over glue. Because you'll end up with excessive glue squeeze out. All right, so now we have all the pieces lined up in the correct order and we're going to get started with gluing. All right, we're just using some tight bond wood glue that dries clear. No, just the. Yeah. And put two biscuits there. that do not put any more. It's just a lot of glue. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Yes. And again you're seeing where the lines that we made to make those biscuit holes are lining up. And this is a place you need to actually do fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Alright, I guess I'll need that one. Good okay. Can I point out there's no... Okay, now we have everything glued up, pulled together with the biscuits. We've got cross clamps that are holding the pieces this way. Then we've also got some additional clamps um, on these boards that are holding it down and holding it flat. And as you can see, it's very nicely flat against our bottom piece. So now we've got to give this, what, like 20, 30 minutes Second before minutes, we yeah. can move anything. But this is now held in place. And uh, again, after that 20, 30 minutes, we're going to be ready for the next and step. And this bracing will be critical if you don't use biscuits or uh, um, dowels. dowels, right? Mm -hmm. Because that many pieces will have a tendency to want to lift. Mm -hmm. So we did it because we want it totally flat. But you can get away with it if you use dowels or biscuits. This is a necessary step if you don't. Right. Okay, so the 30 minutes have passed and we're gonna go ahead and scrape off the glue that squeezed out when we clamped everything together. And this little handy plastic blade is really good for getting the glue off in a good way without just um, smearing it across our boards. Might need to get us a new plastic blade, I'm thinking. Yeah, I have a bunch, I don't know, remember where I put them. Though. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do that for the whole board on this side.
side, then we'll flip it over and do the other side and get ready for our next steps. Yep. I'm really not certain what happened here. The wood would not advance, but I could not see any reason for it. When I repositioned it, went through without any difficulties. When you are not certain, just stop, reposition, and continue. Do not make mistakes. This is the reason why consistency is better than accuracy, right? You can spend half a day to try to make them perfect, you never will, mm -hmm. or you can take an eighth off and be perfect, right? Right. So don't kill yourself trying to make something perfect. All right, now the next step is to actually sand it and uh, defuzz it. Yeah, you got them? Defuzz it? Defuzz it. Okay. And uh, then we're going to personalize it and then we're going to, what are we going to do? Do the finish on it? Yeah. So okay. we're starting the sanding process and we've made the, even though Miss DIY is wearing a mask, we also have put our makeshift, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Filter, shop filter. Filtering system, yes. Mm -hmm. This is the ghetto El Chico. So the airflow goes this way, it's going to go all up into the filter, hopefully, and uh, minimize what's blowing around the rest of the shop. And if you're wondering if it works, turn around, please. This is the one we just took off. Yep. It works, right? It does work. And that would be all in your lungs if it wasn't there. Mm hmm. And you can spend a few thousand dollars getting one, or you can go high tech like we yeah. have. Right. And this is just a $20 box fan with some cheap, very cheap uh, filters on it. Yep. There is no doubt that this specific project is one that we need to do a lot of sanding and be very careful with it. This is going to have a very finished look, so sanding is very important. You cannot say that this is a rustic piece, it really is not. It's something that people will present if they have in their home, something that will touch a lot of hands. It has to be really smooth and it has to take the finish very well. So as much as I dislike sanding, it's a good thing Mrs. DIY loves it because this specific project requires a lot of sanding, a lot of careful sanding and I'm very appreciative for all the hard work Mrs. DIY did in order to complete this sanding project. Put on a barrel style sanding tool to the drill to get this curve and we're going to get started with that. A spindle sander will be the perfect tool here but we do not have one and as I said previously I do not go out and buy tools unless I have a real need for them. And these little sanding discs with the attachment to a drill are just wonderful in doing a very similar job. Now a spindle sander would have made that much faster and arguably might get a little better of a result. I think our result was excellent. But in any case, there are ways, there are inexpensive tools, there are inexpensive methods that you can do the same job. Uh, Mrs. DIY is not very experienced using this tool, which is why we have, she is having a little bit of difficulty here. But overall, this is not a difficult tool to use. And once you get the hang of it, which it did very, very quickly, it produces excellent results. Again, I do not have a spindle sander, and my shop is too small to purchase another big machine. It just doesn't make sense in the setup I have now. Maybe if we move to a bigger shop, that might be the next tool for us to purchase. Eternity late. What are we doing, Mrs. Dear One? We are engraving this charcuterie board because we're making it as a gift and we want to personalize it. Which, by the way, makes it much more costly if you buy it. Oh, definitely. But since we can, we will. But if you don't have a laser, you could stop it right here, right? You could. If you do engrave it, you need to do it before you finish it. Yep. Most definitely don't try to uh, stain or put any type of um, finish on it before you are completely finished with the design. With the laser, would you say the finish on fire? Yeah, we don't want fire, especially in the house. You know. mm -hmm. I like fire. Well, yes, but not in the office. No. Fire in the office is not good. You're right, not in the office. All right, so we're going to pause here and let it finish, and then we'll come back to you with the design. All right, we're coming up on the finished product. It's not quite there yet. It's still working. 
I just want to show you the progress that we have here. We did intentionally choose a, a, a darker or a, a deeper engraving so that it would stand out. I think it looks nice. It doesn't have to be an initial. It can be a symbol or something, right? Sure, it could be a picture. It could be a, um, yeah, a symbol, to your point, or just a decoration. Yep. Fostner beads are great tools for this specific application and you've seen us use them before they make very nice clean holes that they are extremely smooth and with a little bit of sanding the whole process is going to be just amazing I think you've gone through now, right? Or not? Not sure. We are... Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. Lift it, please. Yep. It should be a nice clean hole. Turn it over, please. So to ensure that the hole didn't have any tear out, you did tape as well as a supporting block right. for it to go into. Because again, this is a finished piece of wood and we want it as clean as possible. Yeah. And here we can take a little knife and cut this off and it's a very good hole, right? Yep. Okay, excellent. Okay. So to sand this out and clean it up a little bit, this is by no means necessary it is a very good finish because we use a Vosner bead but because we plan to give that as a gift we wanted to make it as perfect as we possibly can so again while not necessary it is not a bad thing to do Mrs. Wizard I'm sorry Mrs. DIY wants everything to be perfect for this gift again this is a little higher detail than uh, normal but a, this is a gift, and B, this is something that we wanted to look as professional as possible, right? Yep. Now the next step, <coughs> you can either use uh, mineral spirits to clean the board, or you can use a compressor if you have to make sure all the, the little dust is off, especially if you engrave it, because if the engravement has a little bit of dust on, it will look smeared. So that will be our next step, and that will be finished. So again, you decided to just use the clear finish, not stain it any darker, but you like the way this brings out the grain on the piece, right? Definitely. Now there are safe, uh, food safe, uh, other food safe finishes is what I want to say, you know? Mm -hmm. And some of them, they are not safe before you apply them, but they become safe when you apply them. Yeah. So make sure that, it, and also, this is a safe finish to, to put food on, but wouldn't be safe to cook food on, right? Right. So, then again, the whole thing wouldn't be safe to cook yeah, food on. Yeah, it, it probably would go up in flames if you were trying to cook on it. So if you would like to see the difference between the unfinished and unfinished board, here is the back of the board that we have not finished yet, and here is the finished side. And I'm not talking about the, the oil, right? I'm talking about the actual look. Was it uh, clear on this? Well, friends, this is our final product. And um, what we learned, I did make a mistake. I, I forgot I have a joiner. But nevertheless, you can see even without a joiner, you can have a very good product, right? But we have a little bit of a gap here that if I've used my genre, I wouldn't have, right? My mm -hmm. genre. Genre. But anyway, it's still nice. We're still going to give it as a gift. It's personalized. It is something that came from us. It cannot be bought in any store, right? 
Uh, this is uh, DIY. Is that what you envision? Exactly what I wanted. And we put a place, a lot of times people like to hang those, right? Mm -hmm. Or we can put a little uh, uh, leather string mm -hmm. to finish it up. I don't have one right now. But or that, rope. Or rope or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. But in essence, this is our build for today. If you like this build, we'll appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to watch in future episodes of the Urban Home Studying Channel. From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida, stay safe, friends.